Um, I'm Alison Clark, the director of the Papenac Foundation at the University of Applied Arts Vienna and professor of design history, co-curator of the exhibition, Victor Papenac, The Politics of Design. So we're here in the exhibition of Victor Papenac, The Politics of Design, and I really want to start by talking about this particular object. It's a poster that featured on the wall of many design students in the early 70s because it's a diagram made by Papenac, the design critic, the kind of design rebel, and it charts the sort of politics of design, actually what is design. And the point about the show and the point about Papenac's work is that it really expands the idea of what design is as a practice. It's about social inclusion, it's about understanding the difference between ethnic gender groups. It's not a practice about beautiful objects and normative objects. What's so pertinent about this wonderful diagram is that it was first drawn in 1968, so long ago, but everything that it sketches out here is so significant still. It's about status, violence, the kind, of, the kind of feelings and emotions that we invest in the objects and design around us. You know, why do we need the coolest car, the most fashionable pair of shoes? And Papenac was very much a critic of popular culture from sort of clothing to design. His idea was that we need a sustainable economy of things, not just more and more stuff that feeds our emotional desires. Many design students had this on their wall next to Che Guevara and other kind of rebellion pictures. It was very much a cult object. And if you look at it, what's interesting is it's very interactive and he designed it with students. They actually, he asked them, what is the politics of design? And as they spoke, he would kind of write up on the board. This is his own handwriting and his own design. And then it became this uh, manufactured poster. And you see here the minimal design team I think this is really a key insight to the theme of this exhibition because the minimal design team is not some great white male designer at the studio board creating beautiful things. It's actually a team that includes psychologists, designers, anthropologists, filmmakers, and his idea of uh, design and the theme of the exhibition is about transdisciplinary activities within design. As we move into a kind of digitized world and out of the analog, actually what is design for? Whom does it include? Whom does it exclude? And this diagram that tries to kind of summarize the people that would most benefit from design, like children, the elderly, uh, prisoners, uh, you know, groups that normally we don't think as design consumers. This became the basis of Papenac's best-selling book, Design for the Real World, which was published in 22 languages and has never fallen out of print since it was first published in 1970. So this kind of encapsulates the theme and then the book expanded it and then the exhibition and its contemporary and archival work really sets up a dialogue about what design is in the 21st century. So one set of objects that I think really exemplifies this idea of socially inclusive design for those on the periphery of society is uh, this set of toys for children with cerebral palsy and autism. We tend to think that social design and socially inclusive design really started in the 21st century, fairly recently, but in fact, these are from the late 60s, early 70s, when the politics of design really became at the forefront of discourse within design schools. The idea that you could change society, make it more democratic through including people, through simple objects like this that would help them in everyday life. So when one has a look at this object in the exhibition, it's a beautiful silk scarf. You might ask, what's it doing in an exhibition about the politics of design? But in actual fact, it's an anti-facial recognition object that's designed by Adam Harvey, a Berlin-based artist and technologist and hyphen lab. And the idea is that it, its pattern completely bamboozles facial recognition software, feeding it with lots of false facts. So it becomes this political object that can be worn. It's, it's not illegal to wear a silk scarf. It can be worn on demonstrations, in shopping malls, and you can't be identified. And I think the, quest, the question around this object is what is the future of fashion? Is it going to move more towards these kind of political garment wearing sort of rubrics, not just about style and this fast fashion culture? Thank you.